Hey guys, it's Kelly and today I am so excited to bring you a 2021 Hyundai Palisade tour. This has been such a highly requested tour and we are going to get into it. Please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos. I am doing the SE trim level, so it's one of the lowest trim levels on the Palisade. This one with all wheel drive has an MSRP of $35,680. So for a seven, eight passenger car, that can be pretty affordable. While I wish I had one with all the bells and whistles to show you, the important thing about this tour is the spacing, the cup holders and the car seat setup is going to be the same. So if you like this car, if you think it might work for you and your family and you're just looking for some more bells and whistles, just go up a trim level. Stay tuned till the end of the video because I'm actually going to be building my own Hyundai Palisade and that's where I'll talk you through the different trims and talk about which one's worth the most bang for your buck. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about this exterior. So this car came out, I think in 2019, and when it first came out, I was like, whoa. It had a lot going on. I thought it was way too futuristic, but as I've kind of sat with it, and as we've gone into 2021, I noticed that these catch my eye on the road all the time. So I think the exterior is different. I think it's very futuristic, but I'm actually really starting to like it. I think the headlights here are amazing. Hyundai got so innovative with their different headlights and their daytime running lights. I think it looks great. The grill is definitely a bold statement, and it's got some pretty intense hood lines as well. Comment below about what you think about the exterior. I Honestly, it's grown on me a lot, and I'm gonna say I'm a pretty big fan. And then moving along to the side, again, I really like how the body lines look. We've got, and this is the base level, so you could definitely get upgraded wheels, get some more chrome elements, get some different paint colors, but for a base car, I mean, it looks really nice, right? And then moving to the back of the car, we've got our Palisade badging, obviously double space, because if you guys notice that literally every car coming out has to do this, and then our Hyundai badge as well. They keep it pretty simple back here. You know, I, I really like it. All right, here's a shot of me in the driver's seat of this Hyundai Palisade. You know, it's a really nice size SUV. It's so funny, I got an Instagram message from somebody, and they were like, you should start rating cars by if your mom bun, mom bun could like fit on the roof. So, in honor of that, it's got good mom bun clearance, ladies. That's what we need. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about our display in this Palisade. So this one, again, doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but still a lot of nice standard features are available. We still have our Apple CarPlay. We have our Android Auto. Um, we still have automated cruise control. We've got frontal collision, frontal collision avoidance. We have a backup camera. So I'm actually pretty impressed with some of the standard safety features on this car. Um, the display is very user-friendly. It's completely touchscreen, which I really like. I also like that you can quickly access the rear climate control, especially for us moms who have kids in the back seat. You don't have to dig through the settings, find it. It's very easy. It's just on the home page. You click, you click rear climate controls, and then you can lock them from here. You can change them, do whatever you need to do. And then moving down to this bridge area, we've got our climate control, and then we've got our gear shifter right here, which is a little bit different, but I really do appreciate how it doesn't take up as much space. And then we also have auto hold. This is one of my favorite features in a car. And you're, if you've never heard of auto hold, essentially what it does is when you're driving, you turn it on. When you come to a complete stop, you will feel the car actually grab the brake and it will hold the car stopped until you put your foot on the accelerator. So you might be thinking like, okay, Kelly, when would I use that? I'll tell you when, the Starbucks drive through Are you kidding me? You pull up, you put on auto hold, you can then take your foot off the brake and then to release it, all you have to do is put your foot on the gas. A stoplight stopped on a hill, you will become addicted to it. It's my absolute, one of my absolute favorite features that I don't think a lot of people use. So I love auto hold for that reason. As far as my visibility is concerned, I've actually got great visibility in this car. Those back windows are very big. The third row window is a nice size. It's good visibility and it's a good sized car. I definitely feel like I'm in a large SUV without feeling like I'm totally driving a bus. All right, so let's talk about some of the interior designs in this Hyundai Palisade. Again, this is the base trim level. So we don't have leather seats, we don't have an upgraded wood trim, but I'm just gonna focus on the cubby spaces and the cup holders because that, friends, is what is important. This car's amazing, I'm just gonna be honest with you. To start, we have this beautiful bridge that really is very space effective, I find, and then this is what dreams are made of right here. So you've got two cup holders right here. You can put them in and out as needed. So like if you just had to put something in here, look at all that space. You wanna use a cup holder? Oh, there we go. That's amazing. And then you still have all this other space right here, all this flat space where you could put like another Starbucks, a sippy cup, a bottle of water. 
There's so much right here. I mean, I could talk about this for the whole video, but I'm going to move on. Also, check this out. You know what that is? It's a freaking purse holder. That's, that's a phone grabber. That's a whatever you have grabber. I am obsessed with that. Like, minivans have this, and this Hyundai Palisade has this. You can look this good in this car and still have a place for your bag. It's very exciting. Let's talk about the center console because it's also a really decent size. We've got a great little change collector here. Um, we've got a 12 volt and a USB down here. I forgot my diaper today, but I have a size 11 iPhone and it fits great. It's very deep. I mean, it's, it's great. The cubby spaces in here are top freaking notch. The side cubbies are a little shallow, but they still work. So you can definitely like fit one cup and then you'd probably be able to fit some other stuff too. So I'm not trying to like talk about the cubby space too much, but it is just, it's, it's very exciting to me. All right, so let's talk a little about my second row amenities. First of all, I just want to say, if you're going to have cloth seats, like this is a good looking cloth seat. We still have like some beautiful like checkered detailing. It's almost like a dark heather gray. I'm not hating it. I kind of like it. And my amenities back here are freaking awesome. First of all, ceiling vents. We love to see that. And then look at this. Look at this. Two cup holders. That one's kind of lame. That can probably only fit a water bottle. But that one's great. And this. Well, that one doesn't really work either. But those are still some pretty good cup holders for water bottles or like drinks for kids. I mean, that totally works. So I'm excited about that. I've got a leather back pocket right there. Uh, we've got USBs that are actually on the sides of the seat, so I do like to see that. And then I've got my climate control down, down there as well. This one is the bench seat. The Palisade also comes with captain's chairs. Um, if you get the bench, there's also three seats in the back, so you're looking at like an eight passenger car. If you get the captain's, it obviously brings it down to a seven passenger car. I'm liking it. The vibes are good. The vibes are good back here. Let's see how the vibes are in the third row though. Okay, so let's talk a little about the third row access. So the first thing I wanna say is that when you get this bench, it's a 60-40 split. So I'm able to move this seat up, which is actually pretty decent access right there. So, I mean, depending on how big the person getting back there is, this might actually work. If you had a forward facing car seat installed here with latch, you actually might be able to access it that way. So I do like how much that moves forward. Um, your regular third row access, I also like, it's a little button right down here. I love this because who's getting in the third row people? The children are. So if it's not something I think a child could do, I don't love to see that, but that, Super easy, folds forward, and then it gives me plenty of room to get to that third row. I'm gonna pull it all the way back first. Okay, so with it pulled all the way, there we go. With it pulled all the way back, you know, I actually still have some pretty decent knee clearance. Um, we still have our ceiling vents back here, which is awesome. I've got two cup holders, no USBs back here, but I believe on the higher trim levels, you can get USBs in the third row. Now, here's what I'm not loving. They're telling me there's three seats back here. I'm telling you, I don't think that's a thing because this middle seat is so narrow. I mean, I understand that I'm an adult, but like I'm currently sitting on two buckles right now. So like, I don't see how I could safely buckle myself. I'm gonna, I'm really gonna count this as like a seven passenger car because this seat back here is just so small. And we do have headrests in every single position, which is awesome. I'm feeling, I mean, the vibes are okay. I'm excited to put some car seats back here though. One more thing I love is how you exit the third row in this car because some cars I get into, like an adult would have to come do it. Button right here, same button that does it down there. Super easy. And then you just pop out. Let's talk about the car seat setup in this Hyundai Palisade. When you get the bench seat or when you get the captain seats, you have two lower anchors in either outbound seat. Across this bench, you have three tether anchors. Obviously, you need a tether anchor for any forward-facing car seat. In the third row, you have one set of lower anchors in the driver's outbound seat. You have two tether anchors, one on that driver's seat and then one in the middle seat. That's actually super frustrating because there's no way you'll be able to fit a car seat next to each other on that outboard seat and in that middle seat. So essentially, it's basically useless to have two back there because you could only ever use one at a time. Um, I'm gonna put some car seats in here to give you an idea of the spacing. Obviously, you're gonna wanna test that with your own car seats before you make any final decisions. Okay, so in the bench, it's very tight right here. I'm not comfortable. I don't think I probably would feel safe driving back here. I have a little bit of a seatbelt overlap issue happening. So while I have my Graco Extended Fit installed rear facing here, my other baby Mesa, infant seat installed here as you can see like the bench is not quite not wide enough for me to ride safely but without me back here as far as my clearance goes especially for this rear facing seat i've actually got really good clearance it still feels pretty roomy back here um, i just think the way the seat belts are set up and kind of how narrow this middle seat is i'm not quite it's not quite enough for me to give it the thumbs up 
Guys, when we're in this third row looking at this car seat setup, just one more thing to note. If you look at where these latch anchors are, they do kind of go, they kind of share seats with each other. So you're literally installing it in the middle. So just want to say like, if you have a car seat back here, this is never really an eight passenger car in my eyes. More annoying things back here. This headrest isn't removable, so I couldn't even get my latch anchor or my tether anchor under there. Some tether anchors you can put over the headrest. You would just have to check your vehicle manual to see what they recommend. I'm going to try to install it in the middle seat, but it's not going well. Okay guys, so I just, I've been back here for a while trying to install a forward facing car seat. I'm not having a ton of luck. I just don't really like this bench back here. I just received my child passenger safety certification this past week. So I have not had a chance to play with every car seat in every car yet. I don't feel great about any sort of installation with this Graco forward facing back here for a couple of reasons. I have an overhang right here. These headrests aren't removable, so I was having trouble taking my tether anchor back there. With the way that these lower anchors are, they're hanging over the seatbelt. I would be worried about damaging the seatbelt eventually. It's squished. I don't feel like a child's legs could hang off back here. I'm just not really a fan of like car seats back here. I think this would be much better for booster age children or smaller adults. Okay, I said earlier I wondered if you could access the third row if you had a car seat installed here with latch. I installed this base with the, with the lower anchors. So I'm wondering that if I was a mom who needed to get someone in the back seat and I had a baby, let's say I don't load the baby right away and I move this forward, I wonder if a kid couldn't slow their back there. They probably could. Oh, they definitely could. Okay, so that's something to think about. And then you would just load the baby. Now this door is opening, it's okay. It's not the widest ever, but it's still working. Not bad. Okay, so let's see if my a Baby Vista stroller fits with the third row up. Um, she's tight. I'm a little nervous about that. I'd probably have to pop the wheel off, but I wonder if I put this up, I've got an extra little compartment right here that kind of gives me a couple more inches and then I bet I could get the stroller to fit. Oh my gosh, it freaking worked. Look at this. It's like a van trunk. It's not like a van trunk, but it's pretty good. It gave us like, what, like almost six inches probably? That is so exciting. Okay guys, so we are just driving around in this Hyundai Palisade. I'm a pretty big fan of the drive. I think it drives great. Again, I don't feel like I'm driving a bus. Um, my steering's pretty tight. It doesn't lag too much. Overall, it's a good drive. As far as my road noise is concerned, it's not, I mean, I think it's pretty fine. I don't know. I never really mind road noise that much. I mean, there's some cars where it's like so bad. This car, I'm not totally noticing it. I liked it. I think just kind of like to summarize, this car would be great for someone who has like two kids, maybe three kids, definitely not three kids in big car seats. So I, I, it's really tough. I mean, that third row for car seat, for big car seats, it's just really hard. So just something to keep in mind if you've got like some older kids, only two kids, I think this is definitely an option, but for three or more car seats, it's just gonna be, it's not my favorite choice. Okay guys, so that is going to wrap up my 2021 Hyundai Palisade tour. I really do love the car. I love the design. I love it from the driver's comfort perspective. And you know, I think it's going to work for a lot of moms out there. If you just are a mom who's looking for multiple kids in car seats, it might just be one that I would personally avoid just for the inconvenience of it all and how difficult that third row is to work with. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour. Leave a comment below about which vehicle I should tour next and I'll see you guys next time. All right guys, let's build my very own 2021 Hyundai Palisade. So just to recap, I did the SE trim level, which was the very base. I do think if I were to build my own and talking about most bang for your buck, especially when it comes to safety features, I do think the SEL offers some additional safety features. The main one being that blind spot. You also do get some nicer bells and whistles, which is, you know, kind of fun. And what I like about the SEL versus the limited is the SEL, you can still get the bench option. So because that third row is so hard, I can't imagine losing another seat because really, to me, if you got the captain's chairs, it's truly a six passenger car. So while the bench wasn't fabulous in here, it was definitely better than nothing. So I would keep the SEL so I could continue to have that bench option. And then there's two different package options. You can either get the convenience for 2,400 or the premium for 3,100. I am gonna go ahead and add the premium. Um, the main things that it gives you that I liked was it gives you leather, um, it gives you heated second row seats, a heated steering wheel, navigation, highway drive assist, um, driver talk, which is like that in-car intercom. So to me, the leather alone was almost enough for me to put, go up to the premium package, but all those other features is also nice. And then we get into the colors. Color options are okay to me. 
I think this navy is pretty cute. You guys know I love a blue car, so I'm probably going to do the navy. I also really think the palisade is amazing in white, and then I think this gray option is pretty cool too, but I'm going to go ahead and go for um, the blue. And then you could do light interior or black or kind of like a lighter gray. So I like them all. I'm going to do black. I seem to kind of gravitate towards black a little bit more. Um, and then my two different engine options, I'm just going to keep the 3.8 liter V6. And then there's a couple of other like add-ons that you could choose to do. I'm going to skip all of those though. So then that would bring my 2021 Hyundai Palisade to an MSRP of $42,010.